my mind blue and I'm gonna be reading 171 to 172. Basil. We've decided to create one final masterpiece. It wasn't for school, it wasn't for credit, it was for fun. And when he was finished, it was spectacular. A one catch-all. It wasn't anything useful, yet it was amazing. It's wild and shimmed and corrupt. But it didn't have any purpose except to catch the bees. It was made from dozens of parts and pieces that had littered to its room. And it glowed and glowed under the burnished handiwork of Cher's brain. We gave the two a few spots a final polish. He stepped back admiring the brass and copper piece, and his fur landed on Cher's tail. The dragon flinched slightly, but otherwise didn't move. Sorry, Cher, Creep said absently, and then stopped. Cher, you okay? Cher was noticeably down and he had been several weeks earlier. His emerald green scales were now bay and dull. They didn't ripple with excitement. Twig knows that even Shira's eyes were fine. Lemmy and Black Luster. They were not they were not the shiny gold they have been. We'll have some fun today, Shale, Twig said bravely. Twig said bravely. For a second he wondered if his cherry tongue was for Cher or for himself. He knew Cher didn't belong inside the old town. You'll be okay, Cher. You just need some rest, said Twig. The dragon lifted his head and burned. Twig hurried back along the path under May, ap under May apples, carrying a sack full of space bushes, berries. His mother would be making a space bush berry cake. This evening, the trick of thought, or maybe with space acorn pudding, since mouth began to waddle. Where are you going so fast? came a voice from directly up the path, and Basil appeared and blocking his way. Rick died, tried to scoop out. I've got no time for you, Basil. Oh, yeah? Basil replied. He reached into Twig's bag, uninvited, pulled out a ripe berry, and began and began to munch on. You better make some time for me, because I've got an important message for you.